How's it going everyone? My name is Mulder and welcome back to GameCron. Today we're looking at Cyberpunk 2077 Vehicles Worth Having. I'll be showing you in this video what vehicles I have bought so far in the game and the ones I truly cherish to run around in. Also at the end of the video I will show you three key vehicles that you can get for free. Bear in mind when we get to that part there might be a little bit of a spoiler ahead. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. Now in order for you to get notifications to when you can buy vehicles you have to meet all the fixers. You can do this easily simply by just driving around Night City until you enter their territory. Once you've entered into a fixer's territory and they've messaged you and a little bit of time has passed, they'll start sending you messages on what vehicles they have for sale. I'll go through each fixer and name which vehicles I decided to buy from them. If you spot a vehicle that you really like in this list, simply go into your game, go to journal, and then simply look at the rides menu that should be under gigs. Not only will it show you the location of where you can buy this vehicle, but also its price. The first fixer we're going to talk about is Sebastian, and the vehicle I decided to buy for him was the Alvarado. This is a luxury vehicle that you'll see quite often in the streets of Round Night City. The reason why I decided to buy this vehicle is because I enjoy its color, its handling is pretty decent, and it's just a very stylish car. It can also take some pretty decent punishment on the road, especially if you're running into other vehicles or taking heavy gunfire. The next Victor's vehicle I purchased from was from El Capitan Reyes, and the first vehicle I bought for him was the Quadra 66. This orange beast of a muscle car looks like something straight out of Dukes of Hazard. This car is fast. Not only can you get from A to B in a heartbeat, but it's also a great vehicle to summon whenever you're taking heavy gunfire or you need to get away before the cops show up. And another great thing too, I love the sound of the engine of this car and its interior. The next vehicle I purchased from this character was the Machina MTL1. I really like the red of this truck and that nice little orange stripe that goes on the sides of the vehicle. This is a great vehicle to use if you want to just push cars out of your way if you need to get to a destination in a hurry. It can also take a decent amount of punishment before blowing up as well. It's not as fast as some of the other cars I've mentioned, but it again, it's one of those trucks that you just want to get if you want to just roll people over and get them out of your way. The next fixture I'm going to talk about is Regina Jones. And the car that I decided to get from her, which I hope I'm saying this right, it's the Mitsuna Shino. This car kind of reminds me of Tron, and it definitely has the speed to boost. This is actually a pretty fun car to use when you're racing, not to mention the fact that the interior itself is just a beauty to look at. Now the next fixture I'm going to talk about is Dakota Smith. This is the fixture where you can buy some seriously looking Mad Max vehicles from her. And the first one is Little Mule. This beast of an off-road vehicle looks like something straight out of Halo, in terms of looking just like the Warthog. This off-road vehicle can go straight off from the main road and onto the dirt and get you to your destination in a hurry. It can also take a decent amount of punishment, especially from heavy gunfire. Personally, I really like the Nomad vehicles, and this is definitely one of my favorites. But the next vehicle we're going to talk about is the all-terrain custom Mitsuna Shina. Now, I have to honestly say, this is actually one of the fastest vehicles I can get in this game so far. Honestly, with the way this car looks, it's only missing a rocket launcher, and that's about it. And we have one more Nomad vehicle to take a look at from this fixer, which is the Quadra Custom. This is another Mad Max looking vehicle with the same amount of speed as you would normally get from another Quadra, but now can also go off-road and rarely lose any of its speed. And again, the interior of this vehicle is gorgeous, if you're a fan of Nomad vehicles, or Mad Max. If you have the Eddies lying around and you're really into these type of off-road Mad Max looking style vehicles, these three vehicles are perfect for you. Moving on to the next fixer is Wakako. And this is the fixer that you want to get some pretty cool bikes from. And the first one is the Yaiba Kusanagi Motorcycle. Now when I first got this bike, I kid you not, I thought it was straight from the animated film Akina. And it definitely feels like they got some inspiration thanks to that film. This bike is fast, but it definitely suffers a little bit when turning. But if you're a fan of the Akina movie and you're really looking forward to having a bike, this is definitely one of the cheaper bikes you can get in the game. But before I get to the second bike that I bought from her, the next vehicle I actually purchased was the Rayfield Arendite, which for those of you out there who've ever played any of the Witcher games, you'll know this is actually the name of a very popular and rare blade within the game. So it's pretty cool that the developers threw in this little easter egg for anyone out there that can afford to buy this car. Not only is this vehicle as sleek as the sword that it's named after, but it is ridiculously fast. It is easily one of the most expensive cars you can get in the game. But in all honesty, since I'm a huge fan of the Witcher, I'm really glad I bought this car. But the, finally, the last thing I bought from this fixer was the Arch which is a motorcycle that has top speed and excellent turning. So if you've been aching to get yourself a really fast bike with excellent turning and you have the eddies to spend, definitely go ahead and buy this bike. Not only does this bike have an excellent paint job, but it can also keep up with any other vehicle within the game, or at the very least, give it a good run for its money. The next fixer we're going to talk about is Dino. And the first thing I bought from this fixer was the Chevy Lone Emperor, which is a beast of a truck. What this vehicle lacks in speed, it more than makes up for in its armor and its ability to just take punishment by knocking other cars out of the way as you try to get to your destination. You may have actually seen this vehicle quite often because this is the same type of truck that the cops use in the game. So if you're looking to even the score, definitely go out of your 
away and purchase this truck. The next vehicle I bought was the Quadra Avenger, which is one of the most beautiful cars that I've seen in the game. Not only does this car look like a Shelby Mustang, but its interior, speed, and turning is fantastic. This car isn't cheap, but if you have the Eddies, it's worth the money. And the final vehicle that I got from this fixer was the Herrera Outlaw. This car is all style, but also has some decent amount of speed. Not only is the inside and outside of this vehicle gorgeous, especially if you've noticed you can actually see little Jaguar logos on it, but also has a pretty decent engine that can get you to your destination quickly. It is definitely one of the more unique vehicles you can get out of this list. And actually, to be honest, I haven't seen this car driven anywhere by any of the AI. And those are all the vehicles that I've spent with my Eddies to get from all these different fixers. There were definitely a few vehicles left that those fixers had to offer, but these vehicles alone are the best I've found in the game so far. But now let's talk about the three unique vehicles I have in my list that I actually got for free. That you'll have to do a few missions before you can get them. Now keep in mind, this is the spoiler part of this video. The first one is Jackie's Arch, which for me, when I chose to play as a nomad, Jackie bought himself a bike. This bike is not only beautiful, but fast as hell. And the best way to get this bike is that after Jackie has passed away, look at your side missions and notice that you'll have an opportunity to call his mother. Once you do and offer your condolences, make sure you also offer to go help her at the funeral. Simply arrive to the funeral, help her out, along with Misty as well when you search around Jackie's garage, and at the end of that mission, Jackie's mother will hand you the keys to his bike. And so in a way, it's kind of like Jackie has never left you since you'll be taking a ride on his bike. The second free vehicle we're going to talk about is the Apollo Scorpion. Now you can get this bike once you've started doing some missions with Pan Am, one of the characters that you'll meet at the afterlife that can actually help you get the information that you need about the relic chip that's stuck in your head. She is also a love interest in the game as well. You'll unlock this bike after doing a few missions with her, in which case that after you take down a transport ship that is carrying the engineer that you need information from, Pan Am's friend named Scorpion gets killed in the cross. Fire. You actually never really see him die, but at the end of the mission, you're told that he didn't make it. But if you go along with Pan Am to get revenge on the people that killed her friend, not only will this move you closer to the romance options with this character, but she will also hand you the keys to Scorpion's bike. And then finally, one of the fastest cars in this game and best looking cars that I've gotten so far is the Caliburn. Now the Caliburn you can find within a cave that actually you can get at the end of one of the first missions you do with Pan Am. During one of the first missions with Pan Am, she's going to request your help to get revenge on a group of people that stole her ride. Once you retrieve the ride, she will ask you to go join her on a hunt to kill these people. If you agree, she will lead you to a cave to where they're hiding out. After you kill the enemies in this cave, drive further into the cave to where you will find the Caliburn hidden away in a giant container. So we walk up to the door, open it, get in, and automatically the car is yours. And that's it for our Cyberpunk 2077 vehicles worth having. These are all the rides I've gotten in the game, and I really, really enjoy these cars as well, even though they did cost me a pretty penny to get. But I'm curious, what vehicles are you currently running in the game? Both in terms of free ones that you got during missions, or ones you put down a lot of eddies for. Drop a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. I'll be doing a lot more content for Cyberbuck 2077, but until then, I'm Mulder, and thank you so much for joining me today in the Game Cron.